Strongest taste, loudest drop, head is with the thought unlocked. Strongest taste, loudest drop, head is with the thought unlocked. Strongest taste, loudest drop, head is filled. Hi, everybody. So, um, this is the day I finally get to assign my paperwork to be basically a cosmetic salesperson. Um, how much of a makeup artist you are is really sort of up to the individual. I'm more or less going to be more of a esthetician. Um, if you guys would like, let me know in the comments below if you would like a video on how to get into cosmetic sales with quote unquote no sales experience. Um, and I will put that video up for you guys. Obviously it's going to be from my perspective, so I'm going to put the word my my, as opposed to how to. California is super competitive. So I'm super, super like ecstatic, happy, blessed, joyous, and um, that I've gotten this opportunity in California in a very, you know, I would say, gosh, competitive state. And I know a lot of people actually run out of this state because of the competitiveness. And the thing is, is like, for me, more or less, this has become my home and I've tried to deal with it over the years. And I'm not saying that I haven't had those like moments where I absolutely want to leave and I think someday I will live somewhere else but um, I figure that'll be easier to live somewhere else if I have a bit of a different job or sales experience under my lap but my goal through life is to be happy and be comfortable and uh, this is my next chapter my next step in life so I will be signing the papers obviously I don't want to give specifics of where I'm going to be working for safety sake so just know that I am basically going to be working in cosmetic sales um, so yeah I'll see you guys later thank you so very much for watching at the end of this video there will be an outfit of the day um, when I go to sign like my papers so in a sense my first day meet and greet whatever get started on the look I've already taken the Cebu Beauty C Buckthorn Age Defying Eye Cream and for eye primer, um, the Gabrielle eye primer in the shade Neutral. All right, so I'm going to be taking the Josie Moran Coconut Watercolor Eyeshadow. Here I have the shade Polynesian Purple today. Shake it up. I know they say not to do that with cosmetics, but this is not like a nail polish or anything. It literally is water, um, watercolor shadow. So I'm just going to press a little bit amount, a little bit of the a little amount blah 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 sorry onto the eyelid of Polynesian purple keep in mind cream color bases don't need to be super strong on the eyelids nor would you really want them to be I'm not going to be taking Mac preppy eyeshadow gorgeous khaki color I'm gonna be pressing it into my Sigma e70 brush which is just a little uh, fluffy angle ang angled brush and we're just going to be pressing this into the crease. And I just want to cut off uh, the cream shadow and the cream um, eye primer from running or uh, merging and creating a sloppy mess. So I decided to take my crease color at the moment. A lot of people will go ahead and pack eyeshadow over their cream color just to set it. And what you really want to set is the creasing action. I'm now going to be taking my Makeup Geek Vanilla Bean and pressing it again into that same brush. When it comes to a particular look of the day, you don't need to take that many brushes to get a really gorgeous uh, look. Actually, the less brushes you take for a look, the more well-rounded it actually comes out to being because um, it all just kind of blends together. So obviously don't take the same brushes that you used in one look on a different day and expect a clean look. Normally any pastels that are really pale have a chalkiness to them. What I like about Makeup Geek's pastel colors, particularly Wisteria, which is a dupe of Max Red Violet, is that it's not chalky, it's super pigmented. But in the case or the event that you happen to have a very chalky, unforgiving pastel, this is where a product like this is going to come into um, play. So I'm gonna take Wisteria and we're going to go ahead and place this on the back to the center of the eyelid and then just sort of merge preppy and wisteria together so you're getting just a really soft petal purple eye in bada bing from makeup geek i love this color this is just one of my favorites i have no words <laughs> it just it just rocks my socks so we're gonna go ahead and put this in the outer corner
Now I'm going to be going ahead and taking Simply Marlena, which is the sort of the dupe Mac Sushi Flower. Honestly, like, there was a Mac collection, the Barbie collection that came out. This sort of reminds me more of that, like, playful kind of pink, I believe it was, that was in the collection. Because Mac Sushi Flower's got sort of a transition-y, like, way about it. It's got sort of an orange undertone, and the fact that it's a satin finish, it doesn't have full, um color capacity so it really fits into a great deal of looks as a transition color um it actually looks really gorgeous with teal eyeshadow uh, as a transition color because you just get that little peak of the opposite color really enhancing the teal so um if you can kind of blend this into a color like let's say preppy or any other neutral you can kind of get that sushi flower vibe Otherwise, it's actually very versatile as playful pink. So you can kind of use it both ways, both ways, which is really nice. Now, um, I don't want the pink to be like, boom, look at how pink my crease is compared to my purple eyelid. So I'm just going to be taking the buffing brush and really just trying to blend that out so that it kind of folds more or less into not as obvious. I'm just going to blend in a little bit more vanilla bean over the brow bone to sort of soften the height of the color as well. So that's a great way to sort of tame a colored look as well. I'm now going to be taking Obsessive Compulsive Color Cosmetics Pencil in the shade Sybil, which is a gorgeous chocolatey brown. And we're just going to apply this to the waterline. I make it really pretty and smoldery. So I'm shaking up my Cover FX CC Cream Time Release Tinted Treatment. I just did a review of this and I'm going to have to start including demos in my reviews because I've been getting a lot of questions where's the uh, demo and uh, it didn't fully occur to me that people who are non-subscribers might be interested in that video but of course obviously some people just type in you know the YouTube search and they're looking for a particular product. So I'm going to have to include demos for those who just want to join in for the reviews basically and I appreciate that by the way I think that's really nice of you to stop by whether you subscribe or not thanks for watching my videos so I'm taking the Delling Tools Yellow Bamboo Brush at 959 don't mind me I'm a nut alright so uh, for concealer I'm gonna be taking my hair is so disgusting I need conditioner bad I'm gonna be taking the Benicos, um and it says something in, in German along the lines of natural but this is the Benicos Natural Concealer Perfect Coverage in the shade Light. So I don't know why I always have to double check because every time I think something's like too simply phrased, I'm like, really? That's it? I'm so used to these long-winded names that I can barely remember that I can't even remember the easy ones anymore. That's sad. So I have to tell you what I think because I've only used it twice. So I'll tell you what I think soon, but I think if you have a concealer for under the eyes, it has jojoba oil. I think that's what we've all been waiting for so we don't get that funny nasty dryness underneath the eyes it's like oh, hallelujah I'm gonna go ahead and take makeup geek wisteria and place this underneath the eyes with that same brush it doesn't take a lot of brushes to knock out a beautiful look I love that take my brain is like so fried from just I'm trying not to stress out and I'm glad I am because it's working for me I'm gonna go ahead and take makeup geek preppy I have to go to the optometrist, I have to get my tires rotated, and I have to sign papers for my new job and quit my current one. So I'm going to go ahead and take Makeup Geek Vanilla Bean. I know it'll all play out just beautifully, so I'm, tr I'm trying not to think about it, just doing one thing at a time. Otherwise you'll kill, other. I, I really can't stand it when people kill a moment of joy just to have a moment of uh, a freak out. Makeup Geek Shimma Shimma. It probably really bothered me more or less because I knew how bad it feels to to uh, dread the next moment when you could just be living in the present. All right, I'm gonna take Young Blood Mineral Cosmetics in the shade Eclipse. Um, this is the Incredible Wear Gel Liner. I'm gonna be taking it up on the Dalium Tools 760, lining the upper lash line, basically just to sort of enhance the eye. We got so many dark, purpley, eggplanty shadows going. I'm taking the Imani Soy Mascara in the shade Midnight. 
I'm now going to be taking our Dell Natural Lashes in 120 Dummies. These are so gorgeous. Gradually graduated lashes, which means the length goes from short to long. And um, they do look a little full in the package. But what I like about this, you can see the spaces. That kind of allows for a bit of a natural look as well. Okay, so the eyes are done. I did reline them um, with the gel liner going over the top of the lash band just to hide the glue and the lash band itself. Invisibands are super easy to hide because um, you don't have to go way above the lash band to conceal it, but just the same, you do want to conceal the track because it does normally get a little bit thicker once you apply the glue. I'm now taking the Too Faced Endless Summer Bronzer. It looks like this. And it's just, it's got like a very slight guild to it. It's nothing extreme that will show up on the face and going to make you look like frosty or anything. I'm now taking the Too Faced Sweethearts Perfect Flush Blush in the shade Beach Peach. I think that this is a perfect color for any occasion. What I like about this Too Faced Sweethearts blushes is they sort of have the look of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting blushes. So if your area is sold out of those, these are nice. I actually really like um, the fact that they don't oxidize, unlike the Hourglass Ambient Lighting blushes, because you could really kind of get a true feel for how your end look is going to be. The Pumpkin Poppy Inner Glow Powder in the shade Celestial. Now what I really like about this powder, and why I really haven't gone out of my way to find other highlighters, is because this is just the creme de la creme for me. I don't worry about finding other highlighters or changing up my highlighter ever since I found this. Because it just covers all the imperfections in my face, all the areas that I don't um, want, and just gives me a really gorgeous soft focus finish. Okay, so for lips, I'm taking the Bite Beauty Contour Lip Liner in the shade Cashew. Perfect nude. I absolutely love the Bite Beauty. I think they're worth every penny. And they are a little cheaper than the lipsticks, so I don't think I'm going to be spending $30 on a lip liner. And it does last very well for um, a retractable lip liner. The fact that you don't have to apply it all day is also going to be a penny saver as well. And a lot of people wonder why people spend high, high, high money on high-end cosmetics. They do last a long time, so it's kind of um, an investment. Kind of try to, if you're interested in purchasing any high-end cosmetics, try to factor in how often you buy a drugstore cosmetic versus a high-end cosmetic and then Maybe you'll see why people would spend money on a high-end cosmetic um, as well. So I'm taking the Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics Stained Glass. This is my first one. I'm so excited. I have the shade Concubine. Taking the lip brush it comes with and just all you need is a pea-sized amount. Super excited to be coming back to this product because I used to love it and I have found variations of things that work as lip tars. I used to really adore lip tars, and you could really play with them and mix and match them, and just a ball of fun. So that pea-sized amount went this far, and I still have a ton on my hand. This is the gloss, so I'm kind of thinking it may just look glossier but still stain the lips, which is perfectly fine. I think it really kind of sucks to have to reapply in public. So the beauty of the lip tars is that you really should only have to carry a gloss in your purse. So that's Concubine. Oh, it's beautiful. I love concubine. I know I do a lot of nude lipstick probably going what is the difference between this and the other nude lipsticks you own? Well, it's more or less in person. This looks a lot different than what you're seeing on camera So I do change up my lipstick colors a bit. I took ice cream assassin from pumpkin and poppy. This beautiful bright and hair piece It's gorgeous. I love that. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so today I'm wearing this cute little black dress from Old Navy. It's cut right about here. So it does have like a very moderate um, pure waist. Um, if you have a lower bust line or a heavier bust line, fuller bust line, this is still going to be very cute for you because you're going to have a lot of room to fill up the space. Um, somewhat backless. It cuts slightly above the knee, so it's like not too granny-ish. So if you're a little like, mm, I don't think so. Some people are very uh, comfortable about long skirt lengths. I love long skirts, so it doesn't really matter. And these really cute Mary Jane Buckle shoes. I'm not 100% certain that these are fair, even stylish anymore, but I just think they look really cute with my feet and my tattoo. I'm wearing Lotus in Zoya, or Zoya Lotus. Can't really see that. It's a really pretty gray purple. I was a little apprehensive about wearing this jacket in interviews because I know the way some people feel about horizontal striping. Um, I think it's pretty hot if you're comfortable wearing it regardless of your size. It's just everything is just a matter of comfort. 
Um, I know they say really slim people should only wear them, but I think if it's cut just right, this isn't immaculately tailored. It's very much kind of like a St. John's dupe, if you will. So in full body, that's about what I look like. Oh, I like this camera. I can actually get my full figure in it. <laughs> I'll have to find a way to set up the tripod so it's steadier. So hopefully that works and you get a general idea of what I'm wearing. Um, in my videos, you're obviously going to see a lot more black clothing, uh, simply because, um, We've always seen a lot of black clothing, I think, because the customer service industries wear a ton of black. But yeah, you'll probably see dressier black clothing. So let me know if you'd like more outfit of the days, and you let me know. You would be 13, I'd be 35, going to find a place for us to hide. A den or a desert, perhaps an ink squirt, a cellar, a wishing well, a war or a guarantee. We'll do for me.